Hey, God bless you, my friend and sister Sharon, and today we are looking at eight characteristics of a religious tramp. They are on the move. It's their season. Spring and summer is coming, friends, and religious. Now, I'm talking about religious tramps. I'm not talking about worldly women who are sinners. They do not confess Jesus Christ. This exhortation serves as a warning, not only to us sisters who you are still carrying those old weapons of the seductress while you're quoting your Bible scriptures, going to church, singing in the choir, and some just have the blatant audacity as they go about with their Bibles in tow. Look, they got their sword everywhere they go, but inwardly the heart is dark. And let me tell you one of the number one characteristics of a spiritual or shall I say religious tramp is many times they could be sweet as candy, sweet but inwardly, that heart is that of a rebel. They truly war against God in their minds because in their mind, they are legends in their own mind. And what has brought them to a place of idolatry, self-worship, is the breast, hips, and those thighs. And listen, b- beloved, besides a dead giveaway, when a woman is sitting up in a so-called church, we already know that the pastor allow them to prowl because the religious tramp tramples over other people's soul. She tramples over their hearts. She tramples over their good uh, morals and values and desire to love and please God. They're, the tramps trample over other people. And listen, beloved, this is why you cannot take lightly. For me, I gave birth to two sons. I love my sons. And one of the reasons that I bought us out of the organized religious system, because that's what it is, is because just about every so-called pastor in my region allow the religious tramps to walk around with no correction whatsoever. And my sons, my greatest concern for my sons who have decided at young ages, they wanted to know Jesus Christ. They accepted Jesus Christ as their savior. I don't want my son heart and hearts and minds contaminated with the religious tramps that are everywhere. And let me tell you, beloved, as you listen to these eight characteristics of the religious tramp, keep this in mind because you just might be one unaware. Why? Because many people are sleep walking. They're sleepwalking like the prostitute is usually street walking, but they are sleepwalking. They haven't been provoked unto righteous living because where they fellowship is a den of whoredoms and tramps. That's right. And as we know, there is an old adage that says, birds of a feather flock together. And when you hang out with lukewarm people who are apostate, they have no reverence or fear for God, let alone your brethren, because it is uh, a disgrace for a so-called pastor to claim Jesus sent him, but he's not watching for your soul because what you look upon affects you, my friends. It could destroy you. And this is why many men are being taken out when they walk into the presence of the tramp, they become dirty. But before they walked in the presence of the so-called religious uh, sister, who's really a tramp, they were clean. But when you leave their presence, you're dirty. You're at war for your soul constantly. So friends, we must be sober and vigilant to do diligence, ladies, to check out our closet and our hearts because this is the season where the religious tramps get on the prowl. They are looking for those mermaid dresses. They're looking for them stilettos. They're getting that hair ready for the spring and summer print 
prancing and, and prowling around in nakedness in these congregations. So let us first hear the, the, the facts of the matter. The scriptures tell us in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and 9, Paul wrote an epistle, a letter to young Timothy, the pastorate in Ephesus, and he told them, likewise, I want the women to adorn themselves in respectable apparel with modesty and with self control, not with braided hair and gold pearls and expensive clothes, but with good deeds as is proper for women who profess to worship God. Plain and simple, sisters, if you claim you are a worshiper of God, it should not be an issue for you to be challenged in this area of modesty. And this is, my friends, one of the number one manifestation, manifestations of a religious tramp. They hate correction. That's number one. They hate it. They are scoffers at correction. And, and you must also consider the proverb written by the preacher named Solomon. Proverbs chapter 11, 22 says that a woman without discretion is like a gold ring in the nose of a, of a swine, a pig. In other words, you friends, when you have no discretion, discre discretion, this is how the Proverbs read, or proverb reads, as a ring of a gold of gold in the swine of a snout, so is a beautiful woman who lacks discretion. So, beloved, the number one profile characteristic, you hate correction. You are finding constantly, shall I say, trying to find justifications for your nakedness. You've got something for everything. Number two, some, not all, but some religious tramps like to play dumb. They like to act like they don't know what you talking about. Oh, I didn't know, Sister Sharon. I didn't know. Where in the Bible does it say? They will play dumb. They're great pretenders. Number three, they become defiant and unfriendly. Friends, I have known many in my region. I And two comes to my mind that I was so grieved every time I saw these women. And one of them, she is very uh, all over Facebook <laughs> calling herself a healer. But if they only knew what I saw every time I see this sister, she got on the tightest jeans. They literally look painted on with enough makeup. You could peel the makeup off. Platinum blonde hair. Got that, that, what you call that, uh, one dress. Saw the sister she had on one of them. What you call them? Uh, it's like a mermaid dress. You like, Sister, are you kidding? And I will never forget, I had to have a conversation with God. God, I got to talk to this sister. This here is grievous. And friends, sure enough, in a short time, I ran into her at the dollar store. And here she came with them favorite painted on jeans. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, you on Facebook? Tell about how you going to teach somebody how to lay hands on the sick and cat? Are you kidding me? Nonetheless, I said, sister, and I was not uh, challenging. I was just in a regular voice. Sister, every time I see you, you have on these tight, painted on jeans. It was not confrontational. I said, sister, you're wrong. You are confessing to be a follower of Christ. You are provocative. I can see your, your backside, your front. I see it all. Sister, this is not becoming of our confession. And we going, before I knew it, she dropped one of them on me like this. How, like a, how dare you? And walked away. All I could do is shake my head. And from henceforth, and it's been a couple of years, every time I see her still in her painted on jeans, she just, Cut them eyes, she can't stand my guts. You know why? Because tramps, religious tramps, 
cannot and will not humble themselves to the facts of the matter. I gave us the scripture. Modest apparel has always been God's standard from Genesis to this very moment. The scriptures tell us that when Adam and Eve's eyes was open, they were naked and ashamed and they sold fig leaves on themselves. And God said, ah, 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 he covered their bodies in animal skins. Why? Because friends, since the fall of man, Skin causes others to sin. And even though you may have clothes on it, when we can see your silhouette, we can see your booty, your breast, your thigh, your curves, we can see your breast print, we can see the cup of your breast, we can see your booty, your butt cheeks. Sister, you still naked. You just put some jeans on it. Come on and have an ear to hear today. So so the, the religious tramp becomes defiant. They will hmm, want to fight you. I met one like that too. She wanted to fight Sister Sharon. All I'm trying to do is help this sister to wake up. And every time I saw this sister, she she was on the booty kick, painted on jeans, and she was on the, you go see my cleavage. She had them propped up, you know, friends. But this sister wanted to be feisty about it. I said, sister, I'm your, you, you say you my sister. What you want to fight over correction? You, you're, you're what I'm telling you. You're sick, sis. You need to repent. Every time I see you, you, you showcasing your breasts. Are you kidding me? But when we would fellowship, she would cover up. But when she would go about her way, she was just as naked and provocative. Friends, come on and wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Number four, they will claim God knows my heart. It's what's in the heart. The religious tramp always will challenge you. God knows my heart. You're right, sis. He does. It is full of idolatry. You idolize that booty, them breasts and them thighs. That's why you won't cover it up. And you're a scoffer because in that heart, is what you love. The the booty, the breast, and the thighs. Number five, they will call you religious and self-righteous. Hmm, that is their number one smoke screen. You just religious. I sure am. <laughs> number six, I can't help that I'm so curvy. The religious tramp will tell you, I don't really have anything that fits. I can't help that God made me so curvy. I can't help it. I'm just so, you know, voluptuous. I just can't help it. Hmm, religious tramps, they got something for everything. And number seven, the religious tramp will justify trampling over others with that booty, breast, and them thighs by telling you, it pleases my husband. I've met them too. But my question is, who died and suffered for your sin? It was not your husband, and you will stand on judgment all alone. So friends, there you have it. Seven characteristics, the profile of a religious tramp. They love to trample over others. There is absolutely no oil in their lamps. They are nothing but pretenders. And sis, if you're watching this and you know you still showcasing that body, we know what we're doing. Oh, yes, we do. And let me raise my hand because I used to be a tramp. But when I met my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, nearly 30 years ago, the first thing he told me was to cover up this temple. My beloved sisters, we must check and try that heart. God does not need help to give you a man through them booty, through that booty breast and those thighs. That's not how you get a man. Because many of you, you're cheating. That's why you're miserable. Because you keep letting the tramp live in you instead of evicting her and tell her, get out. 
he or she that has the ear to hear. Because some of you brothers, you need to challenge that tramp that you married to. Some of you married to the tramp. And some of you, you buy your daughters and your nieces and your uh, 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 granddaughters, you buy them the tramp's clothes. So you're just as guilty because you are a co uh, conspirator of their spiritual crimes. All in the name of God. Bible toting tramps. Let it not be said of you, my sister. Till next time. God bless you. It's time to go clean out those closets. <laughs>